Hello and welcome to Union Solidarity International. My name is Walton Pantland and with me today is Sam Ritchie. Hi Sam. Hi, hi. Today we're going to be talking about fascism in Greece, about the problem of sexual violence, about farm workers in South Africa and about an upcoming web conference that's uh, going to be really interesting and informative. Um, Sam, the recent rape and murder case, horrific story that came out mm -hmm. of India, you've been following that and it's unearthed a, a pretty nasty kind of worms, hasn't it? Do you mm -hmm. want to tell yeah. us some of your thoughts? Well, um, last month um, a woman was um, raped on a bus in Delhi um, by six men and um, when she was raped um, they used an iron rod um, um, during the incident and um, they damaged her intestines quite significantly. She went into a Singapore hospital to try like get the critical treatment that she needed and unfortunately she died um, from this attack. Um, all she was doing is she was at um, a university uh, late, late at night, about nine o'clock, um, with a male friend to um, study and unfortunately she was attacked by men. It's just disgraceful. Um, in or after this attack, a senior policeman came out and said that um, in order to combat rape in India, um, women should carry about chilli powder with them. Um, it's just ridiculous. Um, activists have said that this sort of statement is just sexist and um, it's sparked um, millions of uh, demonstrations across India in light of this attack and to stop these from happening. It's not just this girl who's been murdered, it's various attacks and brutal rapes. Um, we've seen that a young girl was attacked um, and she was found in a, a river in India and she was gang raped by a group of men. we also seen a girl who got attacked and she committed suicide uh, because she was asked to marry one of her attackers in order to deal with the incident. We've also seen a policeman suspended because um, he refused to also report a rape which happened. Um, really, the government says that they're going to try to change legislation and do positive things, but we need to keep up campaigning against this sort of thing happening. But it's not just in India that these rapes are happening. We also look at South Africa, where a study a couple of years ago in 2009 highlighted that one in four men actually admit to committing rape, and where gang rape is now considered a male bonding session. Um, in jo and, and also in Johannesburg, it's now described as a rape capital of the world. Um, on Tuesday, um, a young girl um, was gang raped by five men out of outside the Tishwani uh, University of Technology. Um, this hasn't even sparked any campaigns, any demonstrations, nothing. There's no real activism. It, activists actually don't see this as a priority. Um, also, we look at um, lesbians um, being attacked in, in, mm -hmm. uh, in South Africa. Um, this men are now there. It's more ten instances a week, I think, on average. Um, they're being reported and where um, lesbians, um, men are attacking lesbians in order to change or correct their sexual sexuality. Um, and we also look at Egypt where last year an American journalist, uh, Lara Logan, was attacked and she describes quite brutally like how she was attacked um, in a square in Egypt. Um, she was said that she was pulled, um, her clothes were ripped off, um, her hair was pulled so tightly that she thought it was going to come away from her skull. And um, Also we look at Egypt and women are now reporting at least 80% of them have had some sexual harassment. Um, and again, campaigners still don't see this a priority and it really is shocking. That's awful, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it looks, what's happened in India is terrible, but at least there's a public outcry about that and mm -hmm. probably something will change. But even more horrific is cases like South Africa mm -hmm. and and Egypt where, where where nothing is being done yeah. and I mean apart from a absolute personal crisis and tragedy for the for the victim for the person that mm -hmm. this happens to uh -huh. what it does is it stops women from participating in society yep. they they don't feel safe they can't you know they can't Shame guard they comes can't, with it. Um, and I think in Egypt it's particularly stopped women from participating in, in politics because yep. it's been used as a way to to keep women to mm -hmm. their traditional roles to keep them to keep them shut up because mm -hmm. during the revolution there were a lot of women in Tahrir Square a lot of women who were really really active and who were challenging all those traditional stereotypes mm -hmm. about the, the the role of women in those societies and um, I, I think that the, the kind of uh, counter-revolution or, or the the Morsi government during that period that's followed since then mm -hmm. there's been a real attempt to try and put women in their mm -hmm. place and I yeah. think that um, this kind of sexual violence is probably tacitly encouraged or at least tolerated because mm -hmm. it, it stops women from speaking out and mm -hmm. 
it's it's a, it's a crucial issue and it's something mm -hmm. I think men in particular need to do something about. Men need to stand up and say that it's not acceptable and to speak to other men. Um, and uh, there have been a few instances like that. I mean, there are some um, anti-sexual harassment task teams in, in Egypt who are trying to address yeah. it, but it's nowhere near enough. And no. it's a vital issue because if half the world's population is unable to fully participate in society and in in political processes, it, it totally impoverishes our movements, and it, it's absolutely vital that uh, we stop this kind of horrendous and brutal attack. Mm -hmm. um, on the subject of horrendous and brutal attacks, mm -hmm. um, we've spoken about Greece a lot and the, re the really big problem with the, the rise in fascism and also the, the really disturbing link between the fascist Golden Dawn Party and a lot of members of the Greek police force. Um, we know that very, very high proportions of the Greek police vote for the Golden Dawn. Um, and uh, we've seen the implications of that on, on policy. We've obviously reported about the Greek HIV positive women who've been rounded up by the police. Um, there's also an anti-immigrant roundup at the moment where essentially the police are going around and arresting and beating up anyone who isn't white on the streets of, of, uh, of, of Athens. Mm -hmm. And this has really only made international news because they've uh, they've arrested tourists mm -hmm. um, recently a Korean tourist and uh, an African-American tourist were beaten up mm -hmm. uh, by Greek police and arrested and only through the intervention of the embassy did this get any kind of mm -hmm. any kind of uh, outcry and exposure and so you know we're just seeing what's happened to that society and what happens when the when the the right wing and the police are are so close to each other um, so that's why it's really important mm -hmm. that the 19th of January has been called as, a, as an anti-fascist day of action mm -hmm. in solidarity with anti-fascist activists in Greece. Uh, there's big demonstrations in Greece, but there are also solidarity demonstrations in uh, London and also in uh, Ireland, Spain, France, Finland, the US, and probably a number of other countries. Mm -hmm. um, the London demo is outside the Greek embassy in Notting Hill. If you can get to any of the demonstrations, that would be really fantastic. Uh, if you can't, anything that you can do to show your solidarity with Greek anti-fascists would be welcomed, um, send pictures, send videos of anything that you're able to do. We need to stand together and, and uh, you know, stand up against this kind of brutality that is, is being unleashed by, by austerity. Mm -hmm. um, Sam, another story that you've been following is, the, is domestic workers and the yeah. recent ILO report. Do you want to tell us what's, uh, what's happened there? Yeah, um, the ILO released statistics um, this week on domestic workers around the world. Um, the ILO reports that there's 52 million domestic workers around the world and this doesn't include the 7.3 million which are children but we've got to all remember that majority of these domestic workers aren't recorded in certain countries. Um, domestic workers tend to be ignored from mainstream provisions when it comes to employment like national minimum wage, time off, maternity pay, paternity pay, maternity time off and this leaves them left out and not have not very much rights when it comes to employment. Um, the statistics showed that 45% of domestic workers are not entitled to any time off in a particular week. Um, this means that if you work X amount of hours, you can't get any time off, so you could be working round the clock, and it's, it's a breach of human rights um, more than anything. Um, we've also seen that um, domestic workers, um, when they are pregnant, they tend to be women, migrants um, on low pay, 80% um, of them are women, so if they become pregnant and they need time off to even have a child, they might even be sacked mm -hmm. because they need the time off and some employers or private households where they tend to work will not give them that. So the ILO put forward last year recommendation 201. And this is a priority for the ILO because domestic workers have been ignored in the past um, when it comes to provisions and employment. And 20 countries have signed up to it, and which is a great step forward to take some of their recommendations on board and try change laws and ways of running their country. But there are still serious problems in the Middle East and Asia when it comes to workplace regulations and for domestic workers. They are the lowest paid. They are... A large amount of them, they're 52 million, with more, there has to be more than that because they're not reported because they're migrants. Mm -hmm. they, they are exploited and because they're in private households, they're away from the public eye. So we can, they, they won't have union presence, they won't have a voice. 
and they, they, they're probably in a country where they can't talk the language, so it's a serious, mm -hmm. serious issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam. And it's a very important thing that at USI we're going to uh, continue to monitor and do what we can to, to highlight these issues because it's really important that so many people are being exploited so badly and uh, hidden away, as mm -hmm. you say, in private homes, so it's difficult to even see the extent mm -hmm. of the exploitation. Uh, now, moving to South Africa, last year saw a lot of labour unrest, particularly in the mining sector, and it looks like labour unrest is going to be a major feature of 2013 mm -hmm. as well. Uh, at the moment, there is a huge amount of unrest in the Western Cape fruit industry, uh, particularly in, in uh, grape uh, farms in the De Dorens region. And uh, there's been there's been huge amount of unrest, there's been violence, there have been people shot, there have been vineyards burnt down. and the essential problem is that the wage is too low to live on. Um, the currently farm workers are making about seven pounds a day um, and it's nowhere near enough to live on. They're asking for about 15 pounds a day, that's their demand. But a, a recent report that came out has said that uh, even, even if they earn that, it is not enough money for them to, to feed themselves. So it's a, it's a historic problem which is rooted in the fact that the South African economy is based on paying poverty wages and the price of food has gone up so much over the past few years that people can no longer live on those poverty wages and unless something is done systematically to to address that kind of inequality and the low wages that are paid in South Africa I think there's going to be yeah. huge amounts of social up up upheaval because uh, it's it's not something that can be paid well, you for can't afford anymore. to eat how can you afford to exactly. feed your family mm -hmm. And South Africa doesn't have a social security network the, the way uh, Western democracies, Western social dem democracies have. So mm -hmm. people are thrown into poverty and uh, it's, it's something which I think this year is gonna, is, we're going to see a lot of unrest mm -hmm. in South Africa mm -hmm. and we'll certainly be, be watching that. And we've made some good relationships with South African tra trade unionists, particularly uh, with one of the, the farm workers unions and we're going to be speaking to them regularly and getting updates on the ground about what their members are experiencing and what they're doing in order to, to fight for a living wage. Great to keep up to date with them and get updates and things mm -hmm. like that and campaigns and we will be definitely reporting on that, it will be mm -hmm. really good. Um, and finally, just in case you are tired of hearing about austerity and the need for cuts, we are going to be speaking once again to one of the world's foremost economists, Professor Steve Keane from the University of Western Australia, is one of only a handful of economists who correctly predicted the financial crisis. In other words, he predicted there was going to be one and he got the reasons right. Um, he has also quite fundamentally uh, shown how the whole field of economics is wrong. He's written a book called Debunking Economics and he essentially shows how the whole field is, is flawed. Um, and uh, he has some really, really good insight into what's gone wrong with the world economy and what can be done to correct it. We spoke to him in July last year. It was a really, really good web conference. It's been on YouTube and a lot of people have watched it. You have an opportunity to participate in a web conference with him uh, next Wednesday, 16th of January at 7 p.m. GMT. There's uh, details on our website. You can come and ask your questions and he'll answer them. And uh, it's, uh, we highly recommend that you take part because you'll get a lot of insight into what's happening. Uh, that's all we have time for this week. Once again, thank you for watching and listening. And uh, solidarity. Goodbye.